Her place. Her place was in a four walled room called kitchen. Broken dishes were the order of a day. She had mastered the various no breaking dishwashing liquids she used to scrub the dirt away. In this kitchen, she was lowered down to the level of a dishwasher. Her competition being sponges, water levels, dishwashing liquids, and sometimes she had to unblock mini drainages. In this kitchen, she was just a chef. A master of recipes, a knowledgeable spice expert, a doctor of greasy areas, a floor scrubber, it was a full-time job she could barely stay sober. In this kitchen, her opinions landed on kitchen counters. Her musical performances on pots and pans. Her creativity lowered down to the point of determining only the amounts of salt and spice. You see, in this kitchen, her position was belittled. Her value, her value depreciated. She was underestimated, she felt underrated, frustrated, and her future denigrated. Whoever gave her the dits to this place needs to wake up to reality and realize that this is not her place. Her intentions were miscalculated. Her abilities, even worse, no one put them into consideration. And a shallow-minded person went ahead and called the kitchen her place. They could not see beyond the chores, that this place birthed magical meals that not only satiated hunger but fed and raised the generation. But she placed value on her priceless contributions as she tried to maintain sanity in the place. Still they? They thought she belonged not in a boardroom. Her specialty was cookery. Who said documentation lives in the same room? You see, her place was not at home. Battling cramps or nursing pure flows or wiping blood off flows. Neither was her place at home. Practicing selective hearing or being the chief in administering first aid or passing a band aid to who needed it first, it was always a crusade. Her place was not at home to co parent an adult whose parents could not teach real life lessons or beneficial mannerisms on how to coexist. This one they gave to her and they called him husband. Her place was not to seduce, to arouse or satisfy the sexual appetite of another human, to stay enslaved and answer morning glory calls or be blamed for the outcomes and reactions of a penis. Her place was not in the fellowship of women who taught her traditional scriptures, behaviorisms or home management systems which were not accepted in universities because they were just common myths and beliefs. Her place was not as a sex symbol, a stress reliever, a bed warmer, or a horny man's entertainer. Her body was not a museum of statues which held pieces for sure. Cause everything she had on her body were interconnected parts and at the end of the day there was a heart. And then they pretended not to understand. It was the best they could do cause they could not stand. Her power her finesse, her authority, or her grace. Her ability to keep calm even when it was raining rocks. Her ability to think and predict situations which was no joke. Her ability to multitask, to tackle childbirth and come back fast. You see, they feared her in the boardroom because they could not stand someone who could overthink. But that was her place, cause she could battle a ship right at the verge of a sink. You tell me, who was Barack with no Michelle? Nelson with no Winnie or Kenneth with no Betty? They say they feared the stories of men like David with Bathsheba or the fall of Adam at the hands of Eve. They did not even know the half of it. So sometimes she fought the wrong battles. She fought for her presence to stay subtle. And her biggest mistake was to fight for equality. It defined stupidity as women had already achieved an unbeatable level of superiority. You see, her place, her place was a million feet up on a throne, a pedestal, a throne of stone. So without feeling like an object, let her walk in her era where she feels like women and tools but they're people too. She is just unstoppable. She stands unbeatable. Oh, and as an admittable as it seems, she is queen. And her place, her place is on top.